Hey guys, today we are going to look at transformations of linear functions. We're going to answer the question, how to identify the different transformations that happen to linear functions? So over on the right, I have the Desmos graphing calculator with some sliders with the different transformations that we can do to the parent linear function so we can observe what happens. So the first one is when we take our function f of x and add something to it. So if we add something to it, oh, I need to turn it on. There we go. Okay, so the original line, the parent function is blue, and then my new line is purple. So when we add something to it, the bigger the number, the farther up it goes. And then whenever we subtract something to it, that y-intercept is just getting lower and lower. So when we add, the y-intercept goes up. When we subtract, the y-intercept goes down. So this is a vertical translation or shift when we add the line will shift up that many units, and when we subtract, the line will shift down that many units. So let's look at what happens when we do f of x plus c, when we add or subtract inside the parentheses. So it is still just shifting, but since it is inside the parentheses and we're changing x, and x is the horizontal coordinate, then it is actually a horizontal shift. So whenever I add, I am shifting to the left. And whenever I subtract, whenever that number is negative, I'm shifting to the right. So f of x plus c is a horizontal translation or shift. f of x plus c will shift the line to the left c units and f of x minus c will shift the line to the right c units. So whenever we add or subtract, that is going to be a translation. If we are adding outside the parentheses, it moves up. If we are subtracting outside the parentheses, it moves down. Adding inside the parentheses shifts left and subtracting inside the parentheses shifts right. Let's look at what happens when I multiply by something. So let's start by looking at if I multiply the whole function by something. So that slider is on right now. If I multiply by something that is bigger than one, if the absolute value of the number is bigger than one, let's see what happens. My line gets more steep. And since we are multiplying the whole f of x by something, which is the same as y or the vertical coordinate, it is a vertical stretch. We're pulling that line. So it's a vertical stretch by whatever that factor is. So multiplying by bigger than one, our slope gets more steep. Let's look at what happens when we multiply by something less than one. My line gets less steep and we would call this a vertical compression. We're squeezing the line vertically so it gets less steep. So when we multiply by something, it is a vertical stretch or compression or dilation. If it's greater than one, it's a vertical stretch and the slope will be steeper. If it's less than one, then the line is vertically compressed and it'll be less steep. So let's look at what happens when I multiply inside the parentheses. So it's hard to tell the difference with lines, when we get to parabolas in the spring, it'll be a little bit easier to see this. But for now, it's kind of going to look the same. When I multiply by something bigger than one, my slope is getting more steep. But since this number is inside the parentheses with the x, that is actually a horizontal compression that is making the slope more steep. We're squeezing the line in, so that makes the slope more steep. And then when I multiply by something less than one, the slope gets less steep. But this is a horizontal transformation since it's happening inside the parentheses. And the way we make the slope less steep is by horizontally stretching it, pulling it outwards. So all you really need to know for now is that if we multiply by something bigger than one, that's going to change the slope and make it steeper. If we multiply by something less than one, it's going to change the slope and make it less steep. And then the last transformation that we need to look at is if we have a negative f of x, and that is going to be a reflection over the x-axis. The line will just be flipped over the x-axis, and the slope will be the opposite sign. Okay, so now that we've talked about all the transformations, let's see if we can identify them. So it says, describe the transformations to f of x equals x. And this says f of x minus 3 plus 9. So I know that I'm going to have translations going on since all I see are adding and subtracting, so that is just shifting the line. So let's start with this x minus 3. So inside the parentheses are the left and right shifts. 
and it's opposite of what you would think. So x minus three means that we shift right three. And then this plus nine is outside the parentheses, so that's going to be a vertical translation, and we are moving up nine there. Okay, number two, it says describe the transformations to f of x equals x. There's no translations going on because I don't see any adding or subtracting. I see a negative, so that is going to be a reflection over the x-axis. And then I see this four. So that means I am changing the slope since I'm multiplying by four. So I'm going to have a more steep slope since that number is greater than one. If you want to get technical about it, it is a vertical stretch by a factor of four. Vertical stretch or dilation by a factor of four. But the main thing you need to recognize is that when we multiply by four, that's gonna be a more steep slope. Okay, number three, it says write the function notation for a linear function that has the following transformations to the linear parent function. So we need to do a translation down seven. So that is going to be outside the parentheses and I'm gonna subtract a seven. And then I need to go left eight, so that is going to be inside the parentheses and I would add eight. And then a reflection over the x-axis means I'm gonna have a negative right out in front. So the linear parent function is f of x equals x and now let's write all the transformations to it. So I'm gonna have, this would be the first thing I write, the reflection over the x-axis. So negative f of Translation left eight means I would do x plus eight inside the parentheses. And then down seven would be minus seven outside the parentheses. Okay, number four says write the function notation for a linear function that has the following transformations to the linear parent function. So a translation write 10 would be adding or subtracting inside the parentheses and write is subtracting by 10. And then a vertical compression by one half. So vertical is gonna happen in front of the f of x. And when we have a compression or stretch, we're just multiplying. So I have this for the linear parent function. And then the function notation to show the transformations would be one half f to show the vertical compression and then x minus 10 to show the translation right 10. Okay, number five says write the function notation that shows the transformation from f of x to p of x. And we are going to write the vertical transformation that's happening here because unless they tell you that, it's kind of hard to tell. So I'm looking for any up and down vertical changes that are happening here. And it looks like I shifted up from f of x to p of x and I shifted up three. And the f of x function was just the linear parent function x. And then I'm changing that to f of x plus three to show a vertical shift up three. Okay, let's look at number six. It says the graph of f of x equals x is shown on the grid. Graph the transformation three times f of x and describe the transformation. Well, based on what we just figured out with the Desmos calculator, I know that that is going to have a more steep slope. Let's see if I can make a table of my original function and then take my f of x values and multiply them by three to see if we can figure out exactly what the change is. So I'm just going to put three points here. That should be enough to graph my new line. And the original function has a point of negative one, negative one, zero, zero, and one, one. 
And now I'm going to take these f of x values and multiply them by 3 like the transformation told me to. So negative 1 times 3 equals negative 3. So now the new point that I would plot would be negative 1, negative 3. So let's go ahead and do that. And then I'm going to do 0 times 3 and I get 0. So the second point I plot would be 0, 0, no change there. And then my last point, 1 times 3 is 3, so the last point I would plot would be 1, 3. And there you can see the transformed line with the more steep slope, which actually was a slope of 3. And if you want to get technical, this is a vertical stretch.